What's up? Thanks, Nick, for coming to you from the Cineverse. And I want to welcome you to the Halloween special. Now we're out here in this creepy old building to talk about the one thing that holds you back in entrepreneurship. And what is that? Fear, overcoming your fears. So I'm going to talk about in this video some of the practical things that I learned in order to overcome fear and reach your full potential. So let's conquer it now. Oh shit, man, this is a crazy location. Oh, what the fuck is so I wanted to make this special Halloween edition to talk about one of the biggest things that I've ever seen that stops people from being successful in business, and that's fear. <laughs> and I want to talk about some of the practical things that I've learned of how to overcome fear. Now, there's a lot of tips, there's a lot of strategies, and people talk about when it comes to overcoming fear, but I'm going to talk about a couple things that I learned about what creates fear from my research, my study, and my practical experience of years of entrepreneurship. And I'm also going to talk about some of the things that I learned to do and use in order to overcome fear. So the first thing I want to talk about is how or where does fear come from or what causes us to have so much fear. So I'm going to go into a very scientific explanation, but I'll give you a short story to kind of illustrate the point. Now let's say that you start going out for some type of position, maybe a job or something that you really want, something that you really feel like you need in your life. So you go after this and you make up all this whole story of how great it would be if you got it, everything or how your life would be different if you achieved this result. But then what happens? You begin to doubt yourself. You start thinking about all the situations of how it could go wrong, what could go bad. You start overblowing the situation. You talk about what if they walk in there and they say this about me? What if they find that one picture that I had on Instagram about five months ago? What if they found out that in high school or in college one time I had smoked a little weed? What if they found out about my weird past? and it spirals in, out of control and your fears take over. And then sometimes, what does it lead to? You not taking the actions that you need. Now, the reason I wanted to tell you that short story is to kind of talk about how our brains process fear. There's a part of our brain called the amygdala, and it's responsible for two parts of our brain, which is the reward, pleasure type part, happiness, and also regulates things like negative emotions and fear. Now, our minds have evolved from living back on the African plains back in the day for, for actually assessing threats. So threats are things like a lion jumping out of the bushes and eating your ass. That's what a threat is. So if your mind is processed towards threat, it's used to overreacting towards situations because those situations could have saved your life in the past. Now living in the modern world, um, there's not too many lions jumping out or too many uh, ravenous beasts walking around, but there's still things that we process the same way. So say for example, you're going into a situation where you believe that, oh well, something might go wrong. Instead of your mind just kind of looking at it from a more logical standpoint of what possibly could go wrong, it tends to overblow the situation. So you end up making up all these fantasies about what could go wrong instead of really looking at what actually goes wrong. So this is the main reason why when it comes to a situation, where it comes to fear, our brain starts to overreact. And by it overreacting, it creates all these stories and scenarios in our head that stop us from taking the action that we need. So what I want to talk about are some of the practical things that I learned of how you can kind of overcome this response. But the first step was just kind of understanding where it comes from in the first place. Fuck. <laughs> I want to talk about when I first started doing YouTube videos. The thing that I really realized when I first started doing YouTube videos was that I made up all these excuses in my head why I couldn't succeed. Now, if you watch my story, I've talked about it. I'm not going to go into detail with it again, but I had a dream that kind of motivated me to start taking action. And I started going out like to clubs and stuff by myself to test my social limits. Um, I actually leave a link to the first video. It was the first video in this series that um, I talked about this and um, how I use that type of action to press or expand my social skills. Now, one of the big things I talked about also was when I first got into YouTube. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I had so many fears <laughs> when I first started on YouTube. And it was just because my mind was overreacting. I remember my willpower, he always said, this was the funniest thing we were filming an episode. He said, you know what's crazy? People will start doing videos and they'll talk about, well, what if somebody says something negative? Or what if you get a bad comment? He's like, when you first start doing these videos, nobody's even gonna see this shit. Like right now, I could make up all these things or excuses why I couldn't do a video, but who's really gonna see it? And the thing that was so interesting about that was it took me literally weeks to actually shoot my first video. And it was because I used to, I was telling people like, I'm gonna do YouTube, I'm gonna do YouTube, I'm gonna start doing YouTube videos. But I was so scared because I was like, well, well, you know, what if people have negative comments? Or what if people get under my videos and say, who the fuck are you to talk about this? Who do you think you are? all these fears that are built up in my head. What I realized was when I put up my first video and I only had like four views, 
all those fears were never realized. And a lot of times, like I said before in the first segment, the amygdala has us doing this. Our brain causes us to overblow the fears. But by us overblowing the fears, we never take the course of action that's going to allow us to succeed. Like I talked about last week, this is like similar to self-sabotage, where you're not doing the things that's going to allow you to succeed. And the big thing that I want you to realize and thing, thing I want you to take under consideration here is that a lot of fears are actually hiding the thing that you need to do. So, for example, if I never would have done YouTube, I never would have started gaining the exposure and letting people see the stuff that I'm talking about and the content I'm talking about. I never would have had the chance to show, like, for example, when I got on stage at Tap the Future. I never would have been able to bring people in my social circle that were looking at what I did and say, man, that's, that's great what you're doing. I want to be a part of what you're doing because I wouldn't have had that social proof. I wouldn't have had that footage. I wouldn't have had that experience. And through that experience, I actually grew. See, fear is the, is, the, is the navigator to the things that you need to do. Fear is the navigator to all your dreams. It's going to be able to unlock anything that you want. It's actually, literally, actually in literally telling you what you need to do next. I knew I needed to do YouTube. So when I told myself in my head, I need to do it, one day I just got up and took massive action. And when I got out there, I was scared as shit. I was out there. It wasn't even that many people around. It was a couple people running on the trail. I actually put up some video of it or something. And I sat out there for three hours. It took me three hours to shoot my first video. Vlog shoot, take two, take two. Take it again. Take three. Take it again. Take four. Take it again. Take five. Action. Take it again. Take six. Action. We started. And the five reasons that I found that won't let you get started. Take seven. Action. Take six. Take seven. Take eight. Action. I'm out here in Buffalo by you. Right now, how long does it take to shoot a video probably, or at least this part of it? It takes a, maybe an hour because I can just do the shots off cuff and I can kind of talk. But before that, I was so scared that when I got out there that people were going to be around judging me, talking about me, saying things about me like, oh, look at him over there. He's talking. But what I realized was the first time that somebody heard me cursing or something when I walked by, uh, when they walked by, they just kind of looked over and just kept going about their day. Nobody gave a shit because, once again, your fear makes you think that other people around you care about what you're doing more than you. People always ask me, how do you get out here? How do you come to these weird locations? How do you have people around you or you're filming in front of people? How do you get up on stage and all this type of stuff? Because a lot of the things that you think are going to happen, they never actually manifest. And that's one of the biggest things I want you to realize, and that's why I made this video, is that a lot of the fears <laughs> that you believe you have, they never actually come true. And if you realize that, and you can just go through the fear and start pushing through the fear, then you could actually make some progress. Now I want to talk about the biggest thing that I learned that kind of helped me to overcome a lot of fears in my own life. And it's one of the most important tools that you can use to overcome fear in your life right now. The biggest tool, and I, this is one thing I wanted to talk about because it's something I've been reading about, I've been talking about with friends lately, and that's the importance that you put on things in your life. Now, the battle that we have so much of the time is that we put so much importance on the things around us. Now, in one of my videos, I talked about ego instability, where if you place your ego on things outside of your control, you're always going to be subject to um, your ego getting crushed because, you know, you're going to be comparing yourself to others. But um, one of the biggest things I learned when it comes to life in general, especially as fears, is just removing the importance to, to situations that are in your life. So let's say there's a goal you want to get you want to be successful. A lot of reasons that you're so caught up on it, you have so much fear about it, is because you haven't accepted the worst case scenario when it comes to that situation. Now, let's say for example, you have a party coming up, or say you have some type of event coming up. Let's say that you want to make a certain amount of money by a certain time. All these things are things that you're placing a vast amount of importance on. But the thing that you don't realize is by placing that importance on it, a lot of times it causes us to not perform well, to get nervous, and not actually get the thing that we wanted. Because you know, a lot of times in life, when you want something too much, it just moves further away from you. So let's think about it like, I was reading this article, I was reading a book, they were talking about test anxiety. And there was this guy in this book, it's a book called Persuasion, excellent book. He was talking about that there was a guy that was testing for one of the graduate degrees, and this guy got the highest like percentage on all the tests out of everybody. And so the guy was like, oh, this guy's probably smarter than all of us. But when he went and talked to him, he said, he realized that the guy wasn't that much smarter than anybody else. He didn't have more insight. He didn't understand concepts better. But what he did understand is how to take a test. And what he said, he said, was quite interesting. He said, well, what do you do when you take a test? He said, well, a lot of times I just go through the test and I go find the best answers and then I go back. But 
I know how to take a test and I don't get much anxiety because when you get anxiety about something, you don't perform as well. And that's the same thing when it comes to your goals. Because it becomes so important to you, you don't perform as well. You don't put in the effort that you're supposed to. You're, you're, you're going through life and you're saying, oh, well, I want to accomplish this goal, but you don't take all the actions you need or all the actions necessary because of what? You're worried about what might happen, what people might think. Think about all the actions that you don't take because of the people around you. I know I've done it in the past. I didn't want to do this because my mom might say this. I didn't want to do this because my friends might disown me. I didn't want to do this because my family may think this about me. I didn't want to do this because people outside around my social circle may, may just not give a fuck about what I'm talking about. But what I realized was that when I decided to go all the way in on something, that's when it really became something that was gonna create progress in my life. We're out here taking massive action inside a hunting house. Now, Princeton's on this massive action binge and shit, but this is fucking crazy. He's talking about going upstairs, the walls are fucking falling out, caving in, nails everywhere, cats running around and shit. I think somebody was asleep when we first walked in here. I don't know what the fuck's happening. The biggest thing you want to remember here is that in order to reduce importance, you have to look at any situation and accept, and actually accept, what would happen if you don't succeed? What would happen if your, if your, if your goals weren't met? What would you do? What would you do in that situation? And a lot of times you'll find you'll be like, oh, well, I would just keep going. Like, for example, um, and I, I'll probably bring Will on here to talk about doing this party recently, whatever, right? Yeah, so I thought I'd add this in, just kind of show the audience, um, what it's like to overcome fear personally, just a practical example. And so you can kind of watch the journey. But um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn over to Will real quick so you can kind of talk about overcoming fear and some of the fears you had to overcome to throw this party because this has turned out to be one of the biggest parties of the year. So I just want you to kind of talk about it a little bit. Okay, so basically um, this Halloween party that we put together, we put it together in like, what, two weeks? Two weeks, yeah. About two weeks. So coming into the event, Halloween is a big holiday, especially in the club industry. And depending on what city you're living in, we all know that the club industry is oversaturated, especially on holidays. So just coming into the event, it's a lot of questions I would ask myself, like, oh, man, who else is having a Halloween party? Is it going to be lit? Will people come? Uh, we have a big-ass penthouse. It's in the middle of nowhere. Are people going to drive out here? But I could have just gave in to my fear and said, oh, man, I'm just not going to do it. But now we're providing an experience for people. Like, the event went fucking viral. Like, so many people have been hitting me up, calling me, texting me, emailing me, DMing me about this event. And it's just like, it just really, like he said, turned out to be one of the biggest events of Halloween. And this is actually the first event that I've ever done where I've just got this much feedback and this much response. We uh, stayed up all day, all night, filming videos, editing videos, we getting it done. Didn't do it though. And, we, and look, we almost didn't do it. Like, it was one time where we were filming on a Mass Effect movement, and I was like, hey, Princeton, what you think about this idea for a video? And it actually, engaged the audience more and got them more excited about the event so i mean to late to, to make a long story short of course it's natural to have some type of um fear in your mind or fear in your heart but if you give into that fear then you can't achieve all the things that you want to achieve or your dreams but it's all about i feel like putting the work in because if you put the work in if you go hard if you do everything possible to make this happen like we've literally been up sleepless nights for like three, four days just making this event happen. Like, I shouldn't be telling you this, but I didn't take a shower for about three days just because we were filming so hard. We went in a, we went inside an abandoned fucking house, like nothing in there. And I mean, everything inside of us was like, oh man, don't do it. It's kind of creepy, it's kind of weird. Yeah. But then we did it anyway, and it turned out to be amazing. And the events turned out and shaping up to be really, really great. We got everything going on in here. We got a girl upstairs doing henna. We got three floors, we got food, we got drinks. We have a whole outside patio part, and we're just able to bring people this experience simply because we didn't have any fear. We didn't give a fuck. We just said, fuck it, let's do it. Like one thing that Will talks about, he's like, shit, we're gonna do a part, we're just gonna do it, right? We're not gonna think about it. We're not gonna let the fear get in the way because if you let the fear get in the way, you're never gonna take the action. But what if the party didn't go well? What if the party wasn't a success? That doesn't mean that, oh, you're done. You can't be an entrepreneur anymore. You're kicked out the club. All it means is that you're going to adjust. You're going to find another way to do it. and You're going to bounce back. A lot of the fears come from your ego. You don't want other people to see you fail. You don't want other people to be able to talk about you and say, yeah, I knew that shit wasn't going to work. You don't got your friends when you walk in the room, they snickering like, oh, yeah, that boy, he thought he, thought he was going to come up or whatever, right? Yeah, it's fine. Who gives a fuck about those people? Because when you have, I can tell you this, like, not the highest level of success, but what I can tell you is that the more you succeed, all those people who are talking down on you, those people are going to come right back around talking about, boy, I always knew you was going to do it. I always knew you could make it. 
And the thing you gotta realize is it's just not that important. Each failure is not that important. So by reducing the importance, by reducing the need to have the goal so much, you alleviate a lot of the fear because what is there to fear? You're not putting importance on your ego. You're not putting importance on accomplishing the goal. All you're doing, and this is a key distinction because a lot of people hear that and say, oh, well, he's saying that I don't have to worry about accomplishing my goal. No, you just take the actions necessary to succeed. Simple as that. No debating about how it's going to go. No worrying about how important it is. You just keep taking action after action after action. As much massive action, you know I'm going to say that, as you can in order to make yourself succeed. This is one of the things that helped me go talk to people who were way above me when it came to knowledge, when it came to skill, when it came to money. This is the thing, just reducing the importance. It wasn't that important that I got it. But what I realized, every time I did this, every time that I was able to reduce the importance of the situation and get the fear out of myself, I was able to close those deals, I was able to make things happen, and I was able to put myself in positions that I never would have been able to put myself in otherwise. And that's what you have to do. Reduce the importance, don't let fear control your life, and take massive fucking action. A lot of the fears that you have, a lot of things you think are gonna come true, you think that if you fail, people are gonna be talking about you, laughing at you, you think that if you go in there, people are gonna find out all kind of crazy things about your past, a lot of these fears will never ever be realized. And even if they are, they're not as bad as you think they are. So that. So that's one of the big things you have to remember. And also remember, just reduce the importance of it. Look, take the worst case scenario, accept it. And if that does happen, think about what you're going to do after that. That's the way you can kind of have a safety net as far as your mind is concerned that, oh, you can still continue after this. And one thing you'll realize is that just because you fail doesn't mean you're kicked out of the entrepreneurship game. You can always continue, you can always keep going. I failed a lot, my friends who've been in entrepreneurship, they failed a lot, but they're succeeding and they're starting to build progress because they kept going. The fears were not valid. And with that being said, I want to leave you with your massive action challenge of the week. This week, I want you to face a fear. I want something that you truly fear, something that you truly have gave up on, or something that you think, oh, I could never do it because you thought that people might laugh at you, people, you might fail, whatever it is. I want you to face that. I want you to reflect on that, something that's really holding you back. And I want you to actually go out and take action on it this week. Not next week, not the week after that, not after, like, soon as you watch this video. As a matter of fact, cut this video off right now and go take action on it right now because that's the only way that you're ever going to get outside your comfort zone and conquer fear. The last key piece, the last key piece to overcoming any fear is being able to actually expose yourself to the fear. If you never get out there and do anything, you can theorize all day, you can talk about tips, tricks, strategies, you can talk about everything. You can read all the books, you can look at all the videos, but the last key element is just actually getting out there and fucking doing it, taking massive action. With that being said, join the massive action movement. Like and subscribe for more. Hit that like button, kill that like button, subscribe, come with us on this journey, and let's go take some massive action. Here we go.